Good afternoon and welcome to the show Horse Power. I'm your host Jeff Gallet, the show where four legs always beats two. This afternoon, I'd like to welcome Lori Bourne to this episode of Horsepower. Lori, God, I was thinking the other day how long we've known each other and what we have in common, and it's notice he's a tenor. Absolutely. How long? Well, he's 26 now. You, you mentioned to me that I, and I, I was like flabbergasted one day when I saw you on the track with him, and I thought, man, I rubbed him as a two-year-old. I'm getting old. Yeah, <laughs> we both What are. a good looking horse. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about today, like your experiences uh, on the racetrack, some of the various facets of, of the industry that you've done. But if you would like, maybe just talk a little bit about your early experiences, your mom and dad, and how they influenced you to get involved in the horse racing business. Okay. Well, my mom, she wouldn't know which end of a horse ate if she didn't see his teeth, but she learned a little bit <laughs> through my experience. My dad, however, has been a blacksmith on the Maryland circuit for as long as I can remember, so it's his fault. <laughs> he calls this. <laughs> when, when growing up, did you, did you have any influence outside of him like that predisposed you to wanting to ride and get, in, get involved with horses? No, I, I went to the track with him every weekend and every day during the summer, because I spent the weekends with my dad. He, not only did he shoe horses, but we would go to the track early. He'd probably gallop 15 or 20. And then we went to a training center in Hartford County called Ray Ann Farm, and he broke babies. They had a five eighths a mile training track with a three horse starting gate. And I can remember at the age of five, I used to ride the lead pony. He was a big lead pony, you know, like they use in the races. And he would let me gallop with the last two sets of babies. Whether we took the pony, I'd take the pony to the gate or whatever. If it was, if the weather was bad, they had a barn big enough where you could probably gallop three or four abreast. And I gallop long. The last two sets were mine. I mean, you've always been small. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure. Like, did he ever look at you and say, like, oh yeah, you're going to be a jockey? Never, never. My dad is the kind of person that he'll answer anything you want. He will be there for you, but he will never tell you what he. Th he thinks you should do. It's your, Fortunate. you know, whatever you want to do. He's been there for me. I mean, never has he not, but he's never ever said, Lori, I think you should do this or do that. And to tell you the truth, <laughs> as I was finishing high school, I, uh, I thought I was going to be too big to ride. Well, like 122 pounds. And so I said, well, I'll just, I'll barrel race. I'll be a barrel racer. I'll go fast that way. And my last year of high school, my senior year, I was lucky enough to be able to gallop in the morning and go to school. I only needed three credits. So was I that at Pimlico? Or? Um, actually, the first place I galloped was Timonium for Ann Merriman. Wow. Um, and then I galloped uh, yeah, at Bowie for Odie Clowen. That's where I, but I had only needed three credits, so I only went to school the last three periods of high school. So, and then the more I worked horses, the more I galloped, the more different kind of horses I got on, I decided I wanted to ride. Now, would you consider Odie to be influential? In, oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, I mean, people talk about the McCarran brothers, and there's oh, more yeah. than just them, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He, um, and I met him through a friend, through a mutual friend that we had that worked for him. And I only met her because of a racehorse that she raised that I was familiar with the racehorse's dad. It, it's it, the sire. So it's, got, it's kind of funny how it worked out. And uh, oh, absolutely, Odie. I mean, he, you got on a lot. 
they weren't always sane. <laughs> you learned a lot. One day, right before I rode, I got on 15 horses. It was pouring down rain. I worked 14 of them, five eighths a mile or further. Wow. I did not get tired at first. Now, would he, he personally instruct you, like, like showed you, like, I want your hands here, I want your iron placement here? Or? No. No, he wasn't big on you riding really, really short because they were, they were a little... They were tough. They were tough, yeah. So he definitely, definitely had me ready to ride. And now, were the McCarran brothers around at that no, time? Uh -uh. No, they were already, already big time. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> like I say, I was, uh, I graduated May of the year I turned 18, and I rode my first race in November of that same year. You know, for those of you who I'm talking about McCarran brothers, I'm talking about Greg and Chris McCarran. Chris got to be one of the, you put him in the top 10 all-time riders? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I do. Great rider. Yeah. And both of them came up under Odie Cullen. And Odessa, actually, his daughter, daughter is here at Charlestown with us now, too. Yeah, yeah. She, she has a pretty good business, Pony and Horses. So when you originally wanted to, to start riding, did you, did you migrate to Charlestown? Or did you start your career no, down? No, I started I rode my first horse at Laurel, and I rode there for a while. I didn't move up here. That was, like, say, November of 85. I didn't move up here until um, April of 1990. Wow. Yeah. I rode a while, and I sat out a year, and I had a kid, and then I rode a while. You know, I just kind of piddled around. I didn't. I, I wasn't one of those people that said, I'm going to be a jockey, and I'm going to be the best jockey, and I'm going to. I just, I wanted to have fun right. doing something I loved, and that's basically what I did. Huh. So w after your child got a little bit older, did you find that commitment you were looking for to, to becoming a jockey? Or was there something that influenced you to change? Uh, no, I mean, I rode. I galloped horses in the morning, too, for Jimmy Murphy, which was another, I mean, really nice horses. They, phenomenal trainer. Yeah, yeah great guy and, and good horses. And uh, I decided that Willie was three, and I decided that I needed to find a place that if I wanted to continue riding that I could call home so he could go to school and I wouldn't be dragging him all over the place. So that's what I did. Wow. Came up here. You know, we did a segment recently chronicling the 50th anniversary of Barbara Jo Rubin mm -hmm. and her being the first female rider in the United States to win a paramutual race. And I know you weren't around then, but I mean, I'm sure that you probably experienced some of the same I don't want to say discrimination, but maybe that, you know, I mean, women, I have been surprised at the number of women that actually rode here at Charlestown and oh. not so much now, but back when 20 years ago, 20 years ago, you could pick up a program and see five or six girls in the standings. Oh yeah. Yeah. There we, we did really well. Like I say, I got here in 1990 and, uh, who were some of the other women that you recall back then? Um, Jade Charlie. Lori Youngs, Debbie Pearson, Lillian Kuykendall, um, gosh. Now, did the, did the riders then, were they accepting of you or they oh, looked at yeah. you? Get, really? They, yeah. They never, I, I never had a problem with riders, trainers. Nobody said, well, you're a girl. I can't ride you. Right. They didn't do it. And here, I think with, with a group of us, you know, it was just... There we was a great well. camaraderie yeah, amongst the it, girls. We did well. And, you know, we all got along in the room. We all were competitors on the racetrack. You know, it, there was... Is that, you know, you hear that in other sports, football and basketball, baseball, whatever, that, you know, you, you can be competitors out on the field and you can be friends like in the locker room. Is yeah. that the same way with, yeah, same in way. this sport? Mm -hmm. And the same way. Do you find, like, was it injuries that in, ended your career or was it something yeah, you just, just decided to no I, I i had a lot of problems um with prior prior accidents and i i kind of wanted to be in one piece and watch my son grow up basically so and that's what i did i had a lot of problems going on with my neck and that was pretty that was pretty scary to me um did you make the transition from riding to training soon yes, afterwards? At, immediately, yeah. I had a couple people that I had ridden for that trusted me. And, uh, and one of my biggest clients, actually, I had bought one of their horses at the, two -year -old, at, at the yearling sale. And, um, 
and shortly after that, they sent me horses, and it's been ever since with Lennon and Ellen Kilkelly of Virginia. Wow. I've been with them. Very uh, loyal. Yeah. yeah, great people. Yeah, I've been lucky. I've been lucky to hook up with some really amazing people in the sport. And you have a horse that's run well here recently. Is that a fiber song? Yes. Yeah, Rockstar Princess. And they're off. Good start for Ms. Bear, who shows the way out of the chute and onto the main track by the Gospel and Rockstar's Princess sent for speed. Cheerful Chimes is in the mix as well. Then comes Animation in fifth, just outside of a state of sand. Off the pace tonight in this little lime of mine. And the trailer is Witchy Windsor, three furlongs from the wire. Rockstar Princess in front by a length now. Ms. Bear plays catch up from second by the gospel, loses ground in third. Animation with a rush now takes fourth from a state of sand and cheerful chimes. And this little lime of mine is five wide inside the quarter pole. The trailer remains Witchy Windsor. Rockstar Princess in front by two and a half. Ms. Bear and Animation come out of the pack to take her on. A furlong from home. It's Rockstar Princess in front by two. To the inside, Ms. Bear, animation down the center, Rockstar Princess a little weary. Here's Ms. Bear in animation, Rockstar Princess, Ms. Bear, very close photo. Now returning to the winner's circle is the unofficial winner of tonight's seventh and featured race. It's number two, Rockstar Princess. She's a four-year-old, gray her own filly by Fiber Son of the City Slipper Mare, Unlimited Diamond. But it was bred in West Virginia by Lori Bourne and is owned and trained by her breeder, Lori Bourne. Rockstar Princess ridden to victory by Gustavo La Rosa. Welcome back to the winner's circle, Gustavo La Rosa. I mean, that's an, you know, we talk so much about Fiber Son here lately. I, I know some people look at us and probably say, God, we're, you know, do you have any other stallions <laughs> up there? And I, I hate to you know, feel like we're right. monopolizing it, but he's incredible. But he, he is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. just sincerely incredible horse. I mean, we did an interview with Tim Grams to talk about Running to Love You, Moonlit Song, Javier Contreras with Late Night Pow Wow. Mm -hmm. You're, I mean, it's just, it's yeah, amazing. They, they, they all have talent. They so sure now do. you've kind of continued to train. Motherhood's still a strong factor and You've got now Outrider for yeah, the racetrack? Yeah, Outrider part-time. Mm -hmm. Can you expound on Outrider? Because I know, you know, when people are watching the races from their vantage point in the grandstand or on the clubhouse turn or wherever, a lot of times they'll see you out there on the track and you guys are usually, you know, dressed in your white mm -hmm. pants and red jacket. And a lot of people will look at you like, you know, what are they doing out here? Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean you're I, literally the policeman of the track. Yeah, I, I, I explain it as... The lifeguard, like a lifeguard out there. Right. You know, if somebody needs help, that's your job. Uh, horse gets loose, that's your job. And, and that's uh, either in the morning or at night. Yeah, yeah. They Is that have, something you enjoy that keeps you close to the action? I do, I do. You get to go fast and <laughs> I like that. Is that but, something that you've always, I mean, it's the speed factor with racing that's, yeah, that's attracted you so. to it? Yeah, I think it is. Competition, speed, I like it. And then, and there's nothing like catching a loose horse that's flying, and your and your horse is flying. Right. And we, I, only have thoroughbred, X thoroughbreds for ponies. So oh, okay. It's it's really, it's such a good feeling to transition one from being a racehorse to right. being a pony. Right. It's amazing how smart they really are. They're so smart. But yeah. And then I have a ten year old daughter who is in fifth grade, so she's kinda, gonna. She's ready. <laughs> I don't know what she's going to do. She said she wants pony horses when she grows up. My Aww. brother graduated from college Saturday, and she said, I'm not going to college. I'm going to pony horses. That's wow. Like, okay. Good luck with that. It's only 10 years old, <laughs> 10 man. Years I'll tell old. you. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so, you know, when, when we talked a little bit about Barbara Jo Rubin, I, I'm, I am amazed because, you know, I think it's a generational factor where – you know, Barbara Jo Rubin was in the late 60s. Right. You know, your 90s, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think it's probably difficult to compare those two because talking with her, you know, there was... Oh, yeah, there, there was a lot of... There was some consternation her with mm -hmm. her showing up here. I mean, I was told that the jockeys were going to refuse to ride yeah. that evening, that <laughs> people were upset, you know, that older, the old cigar smoking, yeah. typical racetrack man of the that Wasn't era happened yeah it did not <laughs> want it to happen yeah. so you know I, I never was faced with any of that 
not I mean there there are people that won't ride girls I, you know I'm sure they're everywhere but what is it about a girl that you think like I've been told some guys say they got better hands they're they're softer on the horse's mouth that's you know that, do you just that's feel what like I've heard. they I, actually have a rapport with the horse mm -hmm. I think they're a little quieter I mean not that horses don't run for guys they right do. but certain horses um certain horses I think instead of the strength it's the finesse right at that old horse hunter's hood that i rode right i won 25 races on him amazing they'd put the biggest exercise riders on him in the morning and he would run off i mean just run off art muzzy used to say to me how do you gallop that horse i said artie i have to cluck to him on the backside to get him out of a jog oh my gosh he would be he was i mean he just he liked me Right. You know, he liked me. He didn't like the bull because you couldn't out pull him. There was no way he was too strong. So we just kind of reached a mutual agreement and I won't pull on you and you don't pull on me. And boy, he ran hard for me. Wow. He, he was a really cool horse. So what's the future hold for us? We're going to continue pretty much in the vein we're in right now. We'll, we'll outride and train some horses. And... Yeah. Yeah. I, I was telling somebody I need to find something else to do that's not so hard on your body, but I'm too old now. So. <laughs> no comebacks as jockeys. Oh, no. no. <laughs> well, Laurie, it was a pleasure having you come in today. Certainly enjoy the conversation with you. And for those young girls out there, there's somebody to emulate if you want to do it right. Thank you, Laurie. It won't be easy, but it'll be worth it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thoroughbred horses are best known for their careers at racetracks, but not every horse finds success in racing. As in any sport, some athletes find themselves getting too old. Some get injured, and some were never really born for it in the first place. Loose and Capable is a Kentucky thoroughbred who began his racing career in 2011 at Gulfstream Park in Florida. Over the next three years, he'd compete in 28 races, running in Florida, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, and West Virginia. 23 and 4 fifths seconds, and it's going to be inner power. Victor Rodriguez who holds a slight advantage. Loose and capable now, moving alongside. Up between horses comes Fantastic third. Fourth up the rail, Cooper County. Driving back fifth outside, Rutledge Lion. So the two lengths back to Borna Cuss, who moves, moves up on the inside of Mighty Fenian. Then comes Punk Robinson. The trailer now, proud plunk. That mile goes in 27 and 4 fifths seconds, and it is inner power holding the lead blues and capables right there in second two lengths back the fantastic third up into fourth rutledge line gains some momentum again that towards the inside is born to cuss closer to the rail copper cooper county they dash for home, and Inner Power try to hold off the pack. Here comes Loose and Capable, back towards the rail. Fantastic is third. Loose and Capable is more than capable as she goes up to get the victory. Back in second, that is Inner Power tight for third between Fantastic and Born to Cuss. During his career, he took home four firsts, nine seconds, and two thirds, and earned over $87,000. As his retirement approached, Kerry Shanahan and Katie Johnson from Ballyclear Farm came to Charlestown races to meet him. Some people go to Germany to find their next big show horse, others go to Holland. But when Katie met Loose and Capable in the barns at Charlestown, she knew that they would make a great team. The path to getting there wasn't easy. Loose and Capable, who Katie renamed Lucian, was a horse who wanted to work, but he only knew one thing, how to run. There was no hope of quieting him down. All Katie could hope to do was redirect his focus. So all of the basics were put on the back burner and she let him jump. Katie took Lucian to dozens of trainers and heard the same things over and over. He's just a crazy thoroughbred. And he has a nice jump for a thoroughbred. Even more often she heard, have you tried a quieting supplement? But Katie didn't want to give him a quieting supplement or break his spirit. She wanted help focusing his energy and channeling his competitive spirit. It was then that Carrie introduced Katie to Manuel Torres, the Colombian Olympian, show jumper and trainer. Many hunter and jumper trainers will tell you they love thoroughbreds, but very few trainers will take a thoroughbred seriously as a horse who can compete. Torres, however, immediately recognized his mind and his heart, and Lucian has been developing as an upper level show jumper ever since. To Katie, Lucian demonstrates the best of the thoroughbred breed. 
He may not be as talented as many of the other jumpers that he competes against, but his work ethic, athleticism, and heart more than make up for it. And there's no horse that Katie would rather compete with than her little thoroughbred with the big spirit. My name is uh, Carrie Shanahan, and I'm the owner of Ballyclare Farm here in Waterford, Virginia. Well, um, I guess I grew up riding for my entire life, uh, taking riding lessons as a little girl, and uh, always kind of had the, the trouble horses and the thoroughbreds, and um, all the other girls were riding warm bloods and the shows, and um, we didn't have the, the funds that everybody else had, so we ended up with the kind of the throwaway thoroughbreds, and um, those ended up being the best horses, and uh, just kind of gone from there. Um, I guess when I was a teenager, we uh, got a, a young thoroughbred, and he was right here, he was two years old. Um, got him off of a truck that was from Oklahoma. He had six month old racing plates on and was kind of just getting carted around the country from place to place and uh, was a bag of bones and had all kinds of behavior issues and health issues. And here he is, he's 28 years old now and still here and, and doing great. Well, this is Connor. Um, and he, we got him when he was two years old. He's almost 30 years old now. And uh, he's very, very good with the new ones. When we first get a young racehorse in, we put him out together. And, uh, you know, they want to run around and play and kick and, and everything because they're so happy to be out. And he's real good at just kind of giving them a face and pinning his ears if they get too close. And, you know, he won't hurt them, he won't bite them, he won't kick them. But he'll, he'll tell them that, you know, you mind your manners and stay away from me. And, and he'll just kind of wander around and put his head down and graze and teach them that, you know, you don't bother me and I won't bother you. And put your head down and just eat some grass and enjoy, <laughs> enjoy your life now. Um, well, we started out by uh, getting thoroughbreds and bringing them along. Um, Kind of for fun and, and uh, just kind of make a small profit on them and we would teach them to jump and we would uh, take them to shows and everything and now um, it's grown so much that we are more getting them in, evaluating them, um, uh, we do a lot of sales now, the demand has gotten very high so a lot of them come in and, and go out very quickly. Uh, we work with a lot of the same clientele that come back over and over again for horses so we will uh, search out and find certain types for people. We'll also work with trainers that just send everything from their barns, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, whether they need rehabbing, whether they're um, you know, injured or, or anything like that, we'll take them all and, and rehab them, um, as well as uh, nice sale prospects. Um, I mean, for one thing, they, uh, they're definitely one of the hotter breeds, you know, they're not quarter horses, they're not draft horses, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're crazy or dangerous or anything like that. Um, I think where people get the, the crazy notion from is because they're athletes and they're trained to race and they're fit and they're obviously a lot more sharp than your common riding horse. Um, I think that all goes away. I think with some time and some retraining and you know some care, they turn out just like this and they make great riding horses and are, are wonderful for children and, and older people and everything as well. You know, they can do anything that any other breed can do. They can pull a cart, they can go in a Western saddle, they can go in the English show ring, they, they can do anything. It's the late nights. It's the early mornings. It's the dedication. The hours of training that led to the winner's circle. We are the horsemen. 80 years. Four generations. A West Virginia legacy. O'Sullivan Farms is a proud sponsor of Horsepower. Valley Equine Associates is a proud sponsor of Horsepower. With over 50 years of experience, Valley Equine provides exceptional service in equine medicine and surgery. 
Valley Equine Associates, where your horse's health and well-being are our top priority. Breeding. Training. Racing. A stable of champions, Taylor Mountain Farm is a proud supporter of horsepower. It's a West Virginia Classic, the golf tournament, the gala, and the state's top thoroughbreds vying for the chance to be named West Virginia's best. The West Virginia Breeders' Classics.